Hallelujah. And so very quickly, we're going to continue our series, the part two of the installment, the second installment of the series, The Power of Believing. You know, this is actually faith. So what God is doing really, God is taking us deeper into the subject of faith. But he's not using the term faith. He's using the term believing. And like I said to us last Sunday, there's a reason why God is choosing to use the term believing and not faith. It's like God wants to take us, you know, like bring us into the core of faith and to help us understand, you know, in a very deep sense what the meaning and what faith is really about, the essence of faith. And that is why he's using the term believing. And we said from dictionary definition that believing means to accept that some, something is true, especially without what? Without proof. That's close to faith, right? Yes. More or less, this, more or less the same thing. Accepting that something is true, especially without proof. And then we also looked at some of the synonyms of believing. And I also shared with us last Sunday what God said to me. And it was very strong and very emphatic. And God said, there is enormous power in believing. That was what I heard. God said, there is an enormous power in believing. So that statement actually set me on that journey of understanding what believing is in this context. God said, there's enormous power in believing. And that's what we have seen, even from the testimony shared today. I believed. I heard the voice of my mom telling me, believe, believe, believe. There is an enormous power in believing. And I said, it to, I said this to us that even people who don't believe in God, who believe in some other things, at some level, that belief works for them. People who carry stone and be pouring oil and libation on it and be worshipping it, at some level, to the experience results. And we see that in the Bible as well. When Moses got to Pharaoh and, uh, and Moses threw down his staff, he became what? What happened to the magician? They threw their hands as well. He became what? Snakes. Only say that uh, snake pass, snake. But there was snake. <laughs> so the point I'm making is that at some level, even people who believe in entities other than God, they get results. That is the power of belief. It is powerful. Now, we are not talking about the king of kings. We are not talking about the Lord of Lords. I mean, we are talking about the creator of everything that is created. So if the magicians of Pharaoh believed in the gods of Egypt and the power behind their own staff, that they could throw their staff on the ground and then it became a snake, how much more you believing in the most high God. How much more? The most high God. Because you see, believing in this, in this context is the word of God. It's believing in God and believing in his word. How much more? The king of kings. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. When I saw this scripture, I found it quite intriguing. Paul said, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word. Hallelujah. That's what happens. When you receive the word, you accepted it, not as a, as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God. Let me tell you guys this, and I'm going to just spotlight her. There's something about the Madi, and this has been, this is how she's been ever since. You see, every time Lady Made comes for meetings, everything she hears, she takes hook, line, and sinker. Let's go back to the synonyms of believe. Can we do that very quickly? Can you see that? Can you see? Put confidence in, count on, rely on, depend on, swallow something, hook, line, and sinker, and then take as gospel. That is how Lady Made interacts with the word of God that comes from here. My wife can bear me witness. Some of you can bear me witness, right? That's how. She takes it like a baby. She takes it literally. You guys have no idea the exchanges that happen between her, my wife, and once in a while my, with me. 
As she will come, she, she's sending messages. The decans, this word, this is what I heard, this is what he's doing to me, this is how I applied it. I mean, like back to back to back to back to back testimonies. Even the period that she wasn't able to be consistent here, and then she hears a message, she would feedback. She was like, this message I heard, this session that you took, this, this is what I picked, and this is what is happening. You see, that is the power of belief. The power of believing. The power of believing. That's why I tell, see, when you come into the presence of God, and God has led you here, and you know that, see, this man that is talking here is not, is not a prophet of doom. And you've seen that, you've tested, you've seen that, okay, this, this person is speaking the truth. You will be doing yourself a great disservice to sit down where grace is available and you're trying to rationalize the word of God. And you're trying to rationalize or you're questioning or you're, you're doing yourself a great disservice. That's why Paul said the same word that was preached to us was preached to them. But it did not profit them because they did not do what? Mix it with faith. Believe. Believe. There's enormous power in believing. He said, what you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word. And you know the good thing here? The good thing here is that you now have the Holy Spirit. Are you guys getting it? You now have the Holy Spirit to help you understand the word. Because that's why the Bible tests every word, right? You see, the Holy Spirit will help you as you're hearing it. If you're hearing with the right heart and the Holy Spirit is with you, the Holy Spirit will just be distilling everything to you. On the go. That's why I say, even the things I am not saying, the Holy Spirit is saying to you because your heart is open. Areas I'm not even touching, the Holy Spirit is distilling that same word and is touching different areas of your life. And you are knowing what to do. I may not be making reference to your career, making reference to your marriage, but because of the way you are receiving the word, God is empowering you and distilling the word in your heart and he's showing you this is how you need to start doing in your marriage. This is how you need to start doing your career. The same word. But I realize that sometimes people say it, say that they are criticizing the person that is speaking or they are sizing the person up. Or they are, you know, all of those things. And once you are doing all of that, you are missing out. You are missing out. Sometimes people are just simply distracted. They are distracted. They are not connected. And then before you know, that time will go, and then you can go back home. You still are sad, still as moody. God has not touched your situation. You know, encounter. Ah, let me say this. You see, every meeting here is an opportunity for an encounter. The reason is this. By the grace of God, you see, there is what we call the manifested presence of God. And that's why we are guarding it jealously. That manifested presence of God, we must guard it jealously because it's not everywhere that the manifested presence of God is. It's not. It's not. And so, the presence of God, he says, so when God speaks, that's not the time to be rationalizing. Just take it like a child. Look like a sinker. And I'm saying this to you guys. This is how I have grown. All the people that God has sent me to, that's how, I, that's, how I relate, that's how I've related with them. And I'm still relating with them. They won't be speaking and I'm there questioning and doing this. And see, when you are doing all of that, grace is just flowing. You're just missing out on opportunities. And then you will leave that meeting. You'll say the same. Nothing has shifted. Nothing has shifted. There's power in believing. I'm not, and the, remember what I said. I'm not saying do not ask questions. And I'm not saying do not search the scriptures. But I'm saying that once you find yourself in a space that God himself has brought you to, and God is speaking to you, and then you have the agency of the Holy Spirit with you, and the Holy Spirit is not saying, get up and leave. The Holy Spirit is not saying, that is a lie. The Holy Spirit is not saying, I'm not the one talking. Then what other barrier do you have from believing? If the Holy Spirit is not telling you that what? That man is saying is falsehood. What is the other excuse that you have from believing? And then you go home and you listen again. You search the scriptures like Berean Christians, right? You search the scriptures. And if for any reason you have any questions, what do you do? You ask. That's why we do deep dive, dialogue. You ask questions. You ask questions. But if any of those things are not in place, God is not telling you this is wrong, this is, this is, this is not meaning, then you don't have any reason not to receive and believe what God himself is releasing into your life. 
That is why you will see in the same environment, people are having encounters, people are having testimonies from the same word that was taught. The reason is how individuals are interacting with the same word. It's not that God is partial. And it doesn't mean that you will have the exact same testimony, but there should be something that you get from every meeting. That's why we do feedback. One of the reasons we do feedback is because of the belief that everybody in that meeting has gotten something. Everybody. And so every time you come, open your heart. That's what Paul was saying here. He said, we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word. So the question is, what you hear here, do you accept as a human word? Do you think it's just Fred that is talking? When God says you are a new breed, when God says you are a reference point, when God says you are the mark, do you just feel like he's just high sounding word? It sounds nice. Oh, you thought I made up those terms? No. And the good thing is most of those prophetic words didn't even come from me. I am happy that most of them didn't come from me. And they were confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation from different prophets. All you need to do is believe. You are the innovators of new things. Believe. So you are coming up with new businesses. Believe. You are first fruit of a new breed. Believe. Don't say, oh, no, 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 what is special about us? What is special? No, no, nothing is spe no, Please. God himself said you are first fruit of a new breed. That means you are special. And then I say, eh? The moment you think like that, you know what you've done? You've neutralized that power. Because God has called you a name and you are using humility. You are too humble to accept the name that God is giving you. That's how you neutralize the grace of God. The Bible says many are called, few are chosen. And then you that have been chosen, you say, no, I don't want to be chosen. I want to be part of the cult because I'm too humble. No. The moment you do that, you neutralize the purpose of God for your life. That's what you do. And when God speaks, you don't, lose, you don't use your current condition to assess and to receive the word of God. Because once you do, it will neutralize it. Because the word that God will say to you will not match your current condition. And like I said, don't, don't, don't try to use external things to validate what God is saying to you. Because if you want it to fit your external conditions, you will miss it. Because when God speaks... He speaks from a higher frequency. He doesn't speak from where we are. He speaks from a higher frequency. And so, believe. Accept it not as, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Except if the Holy Spirit is telling you, say, that word is not for you. If God says you are the new breed, and then the Holy Spirit shows up and says, okay, uh, others are new breed, but for you, you are still old breed. And then you decide to take that one. Fine. If God comes and says, okay, you are innovators of new things. That, that you're going to set up new structures, new businesses and new stuff. And you say, no, I'm not that. I'm not part of those people. That would be your choice. So if God says, this is, who, this is who you are, accept it. The word of God says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on now. That's, yes. Yeah, nobody's righteous. Huh? Humility. He says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Just believe it and say, yes. And don't watch yourself and watch your life it collides with that word. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's it. The Bible says, be ye perfect as your heavenly father is what? Perfect. I am perfect. Yes. Be ye holy as your heavenly father is holy. I am holy. What I do first is believe what God says. And then before you know, as we are lying, the power of believing. I don't have to look at my current situation to believe what God is saying. I don't, because do you know what, you, what, what we do when anytime God speaks to us and then you are looking at yourself, you want to be qualified for it. At the end of the day, you will now say, I did it. We are nothing. You must believe that. First and foremost, we are not. So when God then speaks to us, whatever he says, we are lying with. And then as you do that, you now see your life catch up with that word. That's what happens. Your life will catch up with that word. Oh, he says, I'm perfect, I'm perfect. What my life. It, I am holy, I am holy. Watch my life. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Watch my life. And I keep declaring it, I keep saying it. That's what you will see. So what is God saying to you? Which word of God are you holding on to? Which word are you building on? Which word are you believing? And so when God speaks to you, and you know it's God, it doesn't matter through who, hold on to it. Believe it. One of the things God said to us recently, he said we will walk on water, right? We will do what? We will walk on water. Do you know what that means? Not literally, but you would do the unthinkable. That's what it means. And he gave us that word. 
And that was the way he, fra he framed it. You will walk on water. I remember when we had FD, Fela Savela Jotoe, came here with his son. You know, as we were walking out, he said, it was just like in all of the meeting, the meeting before that day, and then the meeting we had here. And it was like, I'm just blown. I'm just, so I feel like I'm walking on water right now. I said, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I understand because God told us we're going to walk on water. The young man said, I feel like I'm walking on water right now. I feel like I'm walking on water right now. We will walk on water. You know, do you know what it means? Let me tell you what it means. It means that we're coming to a place where the conditions of the earth will not be able to limit you. The thing is, is when you step on the lake on the water, what is expected is that you sink. So when you walk on water, it means you are defying the law of gravity. It means that there are certain conditions of the earth that will not be able to limit you. That's what it means. And you know what? It's in alignment with the prophetic word we received from Brother Ben. When he said you will do things that are without precedence, unprecedented things, things that have not even entered into the heart of man. And it's in the book of 2 Corinthians that we read as well. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for me because I love him. There are solutions that are on the inside of me that nobody has thought about. And do you know what? They are coming out. You watch out. Emmanuel, can I get an amen? Destiny, can I get an amen? We are cooking up stuff right now. In time, you will see them. You know, and do you know what I'm doing? Do you know why I'm saying these things? I'm saying this to provoke you. Let me tell you, everything I'm saying is more about you than me because God sent me to you. I'm serious. Everything I am saying is more about you than me. Whatever it is that I achieve working with my team, trust me, it's small compared to what you carry. It is small compared to what you carry. And that is why I'm going to continue to provoke you. I'm going to continue to provoke you. But there's so much that each and every one of you carry on the inside of you. And you cannot, can't afford to sit on them. You can't. And one of the ways to come into the fullness of what God has put on the inside of you is by believing. God is redefining your identity. Believe what he's saying concerning your identity. And we have said it here that identity defines purpose. Believe what he has called you, he has called you to do and to carry out. Start with believing. So you will walk on water. You will walk on water. Peter... You're walking on water. And if Peter stood there and said, what they actually wanted, I didn't have or I don't have. And yet they called me. That's something you will defy. You will defy rather the conditions of the earth. It will not make sense. It will only make God. It will make sense, but it will make God. You see, because if God does not do this kind of work in your life, you won't get the glory. So what will be coming out of our lives in this season, in the midst of this last days, will be God grade. Because even our lifestyle is God grade. Is it the output of your life that will not be God grade? You need to believe. Matthew chapter 14, just to read this story of Peter, verse 25 to 31. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them. This was one of the encounters with Jesus. Walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost. Because Jesus was defying the law of gravity. They said, it's a ghost, they said. And cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. <laughs> Say, come. When Peter had come, Peter believed. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw, so let me pause there first. He heard, come, right? And then he got out of the boat, and he walked on water toward Jesus. So we can say that Peter also walked on water, literally, right? He did. He believed that command, come. He believed what Jesus said, come. He believed the word, come. Then he stepped out of the boat and he walked on water. Unfortunately, verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt. We said last week that you started this journey in God by believing. This journey will only be sustained by what? By believing. You cannot stop believing midway. Because even the whole process of salvation, like I said, is kind of ridiculous in a sense to a kind of mind. All you need to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and you are saved. 
The normal human being is like, let me go work out my life. Let me go pay a price. But the Bible said, no, you don't have any price to pay. All you need to do to be saved is what? Believe. And then all of you here in this room, you're saved because you believed. Then why do you think other things that God is now saying to you, you'll be able to accomplish without believing? So if you started this journey by believing, you will only sustain it and finish well by believing. So you must not stop believing. And what we see in the life of Peter here is that Peter did what? Stopped believing midway and he began to sink. So which word of God are we be holding on to? And it's looking like it's taking a long time. And then you're beginning to doubt in between. Get yourself back on track. Which word are you holding on to right now? One of the things God said to me to say to you, to say to you is that there are certain scriptures apart from prophetic words, right? That God is going to be highlighting to you. God said, hold on to them. There are certain scriptures, I mean scriptures written, right? That God is going to be highlighting to you as individuals. God is saying, hold on to them. Hold on to them. Hold on to them. One of the ways you hold on to them is to keep confessing them. Keep recalling them to yourself. Hold on to them. And don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. There's a story. Our time is far spent, but I would like to read. It's actually a long way, but let me see. It's the last passage that I'm going to be reading to us. There are some principles I just want to throw out uh, from this passage. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 1. Now it happened after this that the Moabites and the Ammonites together with some of the Munites came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Then it was reported to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea, out of Aram, that's Syria. And behold, they are in Azazon Tama, that is Engedi. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout Judah. So the people of Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord, longing for him with all their hearts. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and the house of the Lord in front of the new courtyard. And he said, O Lord God, our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand. There is no one able to take a stand against you. Oh God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If evil comes on us, or the sword, sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand before this house. And before you, for your name and your presence is in this house. And we will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear and save us. Hallelujah. Do you know what Joseph was doing? He heard something about praying in the temple. And that's exactly what he was doing here. So in other words, he believed that if they gather in that temple and cry out to God that God will hear them. He believed. And that was what he was doing. That was what he was doing. That if we call you and we cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear and save us. Now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Monsir, whom you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from the land of Egypt. Can I get a, can I get a hallelujah? Do you see what's happening today in the Middle East? It's similar to what we are reading here, right? And he said, verse 11, Here they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us as an inheritance. And he went on to say, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So all Judah stood before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. Then in the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. He said, listen carefully, all you people of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. This was God responding to their cry. He believed that if you should call on the name of God, that God will respond. And immediately, the Spirit of God descended in real time. Hallelujah. In real time, as he was praying, they were still gathered. They were not waiting to disperse before God would speak. As they were still gathered, he was still praying. God responded. The power of believing. There's something in our minds I've come to realize. 
that when we are dealing with God, we, we, we kind of just put everything about God in the future. It's he, 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 a, a, a flesh. As a matter of fact, you are praying, but the person that is praying is not expecting the answer. Yes, it, it's, it's flesh. You are talking to your father, who, just like your earthly father, can hear you. Can you imagine having a conversation with your earthly father and he's playing dumb? Does that look like your father? Your earthly father. You're having a conversation with him and he's playing dumb and he's acting as if he's not hearing. Is that normal? It's not normal. So why do you expect that from God? Why is it that when we are talking to God, we talk to him as a distant reality? As if what you are saying now, we'll have to travel 1,000 miles to get to him and then you have to wait. And then the response will take another 10,000 years to come back to you because where he's staying is very far. That's how we actually deal with God, unfortunately. We think God is a distant reality. But no, he's your father. As a matter of fact, there's this song we used to sing back in you know, my teenage church. Then say, God, I want to feel you. I want you, you know, I know you are very close to me, closer than even the clothes I'm wearing. He is closer to you than even the clothes you're wearing. So why is it that when you talk to him, you think, you, you talk to God as though he's so far? And then after pouring your heart to him, what you want to do is to wait and wait for weeks and months for him to speak before you start moving. He, he, you see, it's part of the fallen nature. It's the fallen nature that has made God very distant. But I'm telling you right now that your father is not distant. He's not distant. As you see, he said, even as you're thinking it, he has heard it. Ever before you utter a word, as you're thinking it, he has what? He has heard it. That is why sometimes when I'm having conversations with some of my brothers and even my wife in a room and we're talking about certain things, at the end of the conversation, it just feels like we have prayed already. Who understand what I'm talking about? Yes. So much of that, if you want to get, let's pray. You know, it sounds religious. You see, when you were talking back and forth, he was hearing you. The Bible said they spoke one to another. Heaven heard. And he said, a book of remembrance should be opened concerning them. He's not a distant reality. He's very close to you. He's very close. He's a fallen nature that makes God look very far. And you think he's very far. He's not far. Right here, they were praying. The king was praying. And immediately, the Holy Spirit descended. Activated the Levite. And the Levite brought them word. And he began to speak. And he said, listen carefully. People of Judah... Inhabitants of Jerusalem and the king, the Lord says this to you right there in the room. The Lord says this to you. And he said, be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And he went on to give them instructions. Go down against them tomorrow. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of these. And you will find them at the end of the river valley, river valley in front of the wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight in this battle. Take your positions. Stand and witness the salvation of the Lord who is with you. <laughs> he said they should do what? Stand and witness what? The salvation of the Lord who is where? Who is not far from you. He's with you. He's not one kilometer away. Oh. He's with you. He's not 10 days away. He's with you. See the same God that you just finished speaking to? He is where? With you. He's with you right here. All of you. As you stand in your room to pray, he's with you. Then why will you talk to him and then you're not expecting a feedback? Why will you talk to your father? You're not expecting him to respond. You're not expecting him to, to act. We must transition from that default. We need a new default that will help us to carry the consciousness of God. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day. The consciousness of God. So he gave them instructions. He said, that God is with you. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord. So they were conscious that they were before the Lord, worshipping him. The Levites from the sons of Korathites and the sons of Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud voice. Hallelujah. These guys, the enemies, they are still gathered. But they have started praising. <laughs> because they believed. You see, there's something believe would do. See, it will shift your current position. Even when the external conditions are still the same. 
It will adjust your internal reality. They started praising. There and there. After holding on to the word of God. Every time God speaks to you, how do you respond? If you want to test your belief, just reflect. How am I responding right now? What is flooding my heart? Is it still fear or anxiety? <laughs> am I still moody? Even after I've gone into my prayer room and I've come out. That's why sometimes I tell people, I don't know the kind of God you're dealing with. That's why when I see some believers and all the time you are perpetually moody. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Perpetually moody. Perpetually unhappy. There's a disconnection somewhere. He said we should, so we should be sober but not unhappy. Being sober and being, there are two different things. So when you, after you've done, you are, you are spoken to your father in your secret place and you come out, what should you be looking like? From the word that you would have received from him, right? You should be joyful. Because you know that the the burden that you went into his presence with, you have left it there. But the challenge with some of us is that what we we'll do is that we go there and we we'll just mount them and then the real burden we carry. And then we come out and we are still looking the same way. You don't drop the burden. You carry it. So every time you go into the secret place, what do you come out with? If you want to test what you come out with, just check your mood. It's a proof of the word that you have received. Because every time you, you talk to God, he speaks back to you. So what has he said concerning that situation? And so these guys, they began to praise. And then they went up, got up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness. Just as God has said. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said again. He said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he said, believe and trust in the Lord your God and you will be established. Can you see that word again? So he knew that, yes, we have encountered God. He knew that, yes, we have received an answer from him, but he still wanted to reinforce the belief of the people. And he said to them, believe your Lord, your God, and you will be established. You will be secure. And he said, believe and trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. Believe. Hallelujah. Believe. And then they went on and on, and they didn't have to lift a finger. They are enemies. They all turn against one another. And do you know what happened at the end of the day? By the time they got there, they only went there for the spoil. Hallelujah. They went there for what? For the spoil. They didn't have to lift a finger because they believed. Which word are you holding on to right now? Where you are seated right now. Which word of God are you holding on to? What are you believing about your identity, about your purpose, about the calling of God upon your life? What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? So like I said, we started this journey by believing. That's one thing that God is emphasizing. You see that innocent belief because it was so innocent when I gave my life to Christ. Very innocent. There was nothing. I didn't do anything really. All I did was believe the man that was speaking. And then I said, okay, God, I want to give my life to you right now. And it led me to say a prayer. And I said a prayer on that faithful day, on a Monday, like I always say, between 7 and 8 p.m., 31st of January, year 2000. And I stand before you. You see that believing brought me here today. Hallelujah. And you see that believing will take me to the finish. And I must not stop believing. Both in the macro things of God and even the little details of the journey. Hallelujah. Because I know some of you here, you say, oh, I fear I know I'm going to heaven. I believe that. But how about that situation in your life? The, my, my, the micro things that you're struggling to believe and to hold on to the word of God for. How about those things? It's the same principle. You must keep Believe it. You must keep believing. You must keep believing. And for some of you, you're saying, oh, what God is saying to me, sometimes some thoughts that I think, you know, and all of that, they are so big and all of that. Yes, you're dealing with a big God. You're dealing with a big God. Oh, you think God will give you pedestrian stuff? No, no, he won't give you pedestrian stuff. That's why I said to us last week that some of you, you need to rethink your life, rethink your business, rethink your career. And you think that business that God has given you, you think it's just for you to meet your needs. And God is saying, no. That business has the capacity to feed thousands, to employ thousands. You need to start rethinking that. And you must believe what God is saying concerning you. The power of believing. There is enormous power in believing. Hallelujah. Don't stop believing. And I want to encourage you. You see, the word of God in this season should be your best friend. Your best friend. Your best friend. We're going to be starting another Bible study. Tomorrow, please, don't lag behind. God will speak to you. And God's already speaking to you. You see the prophetic words that God has spoken to us as a community? Come on now. Believe them hook, line, and sinker. As I stand before you right now, I'm the first fruit of a new breed that God is raising in Nigeria. Yes. There has never been a generation like ours. I believe it. Oh, go to Joel chapter 2. That's what the Bible says. A generation is coming. There's, been, there's, there's no none like them. They are like an army. They are coming and they are coming to invade the land. That is us. God is raising an elite force and you are part of that force. Believe it. God is saying, I'm going to do new things. 
You're going to do new things, unprecedented things. Believe it. And like I said to you, you're looking for scripture to back it up. It's there, but you need to believe it. Hallelujah. You need to believe it. And so we need a new heart default. We need a reset in our heart and our mind when it comes to the word of God. Some of you are too mature for God. You need to become a baby again. Yeah, some of us are too mature for God. You have overgrown. So you, you are no longer believing like a child. You want proof for you to believe. But believing is actually holding and believing that something is true without proof. Can you be like a child again and hold on to the word? Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet. And I want us to pray this prayer and say, God, reconfigure my heart and reconfigure my mind. Help me to be like a child. Again, help me to be like a child. Help me to be like a child again. Reconfigure my heart. Reconfigure my mind. When I said yes to you many years ago, there was no proof. I was living in sin. I was a sinner. All I did was believe and I said yes to you. And here I am today. You have carried me through for over two decades. Consistently growing because of that simple yes, I said. Without proof. There was no evidence that I could stop some things when I said yes to God. I had a lot of struggles back in the day. I was still doing them when I said yes to him. There was no evidence that I could let go of some of those habits. But all I did was believe. All I did was believe. I believed. And here I am today. That same heart, don't lose it. That's what God is saying. Don't lose that heart. Concerning your career, that is that same heart that you need to have. Concerning your marriage, is the same heart you need to have. Concerning your children, yeah, you, you know, some of us are worried for our children. God is saying, just, can you just trust me for your children? Can you trust me for your children? Can you trust me for that situation? Can you trust me? Can you just believe? When you gave your life to me, there was no evidence that you would be the woman that you are today. There was no proof that you would stop all those things that you were doing. But yet you believed. You surrendered your life. And today you have journeyed. Today you have left those, behave- those, those attitudes and those patterns and behaviors behind. That is the power of believing. And God is saying, don't stop believing. All you need to do is just be like a child. The same way you are innocent. You just came and said, God, I can't help myself. I need you to help me. And you said that simple prayer. And I came into your life. And you got saved. It's the same thing. Don't lose faith now. Don't lose faith. Everything I'm saying to you, just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Father, give us a new heart. Give us a new mind. Even the big things that you're saying to us. There is no evidence of those things around us presently. But we believe you. We believe you. We believe. We believe. Help me to keep believing. Help me to keep believing. Help me never to stop believing. Never to stop believing. Never to stop believing. Never to stop believing. Take a moment to just reflect on the promises of God to you. Reflect on prophetic words that have been spoken into your life. Reflect on prophetic words that have been released upon this house. So if you are here and you are saying, oh, no prophet has given me a word yet and all of that. But no, by being a member of the finishing church, automatically there are prophetic words that have been released upon your life. Reflect on them. Reflect on those portions of the scripture that the Holy Spirit has enlightened to you at some point and is telling you to hold on to reflect on them and keep telling God that you believe tell him 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 you believe believe. And God would also have me remind you that he is close to you. And I need all of us to also pray this prayer and say, God, help me to know how close you are to me. Help me to know how close you are to me. Help me to know how close you are to me. The song says, I want to see you, Lord. I know you are so near to me than the clothes I am wearing. Father, speak to me. I want to see you, Lord. 
I know you are so near to me than the clothes I am wearing. Father, speak to me. I want to see you, Lord. I know you are so near to me than the clothes I am wearing. Father, speak to me. I want to see you, Lord. I know you are so near to me than the clothes I am wearing. Father, speak to me. I need you to pray and say, Father, you will no longer be a distant reality to me. <laughs> you will no longer be a distant reality to me, Father. I believe that you are near. I believe that you are close. I believe that you live on the inside of me. I believe that you are on the inside of me, Father. You are no longer a distant reality. You are no longer a distant reality. Even before I utter a word, you have heard. Hey! Because you live on the inside of me. <laughs> you know the meditations of my heart. Ever before I utter a word, you know the content of my heart. You are that close, oh God. Let this reality hit my mind. 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 Hit my mind. Help me to know how close you are to me. Oh God, you are not a distant reality. No more a distant reality. No more a distant reality. No more a distant reality. Help me to feel you. Help me to touch you. Help me to hear you. Because you are close. Give me a new side of you. Give me a new consciousness of your presence. Give me a new awareness of your presence. A new awareness and a new consciousness of your presence. God wants you to be able to hear his whispers. God wants you to be able to hear his whispers. He wants you to be able to hear his whispers. You have the capacity to hear his whispers. You do because you are a sheep. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. He is close to you. He is not far from you. All you need to do is reconfigure your mind. It's your mind that is telling you that God is a distant reality. It's your mind that is telling you that what you are saying to God, God is not hearing. It's your mind that is telling you that what you are saying to God will need to journey for days and weeks for God to hear. It's your mind that is telling you that you will need days and weeks to get response to your prayer. It's your mind. But God is saying, I am close to you. But you just need to believe me. Even that in itself requires a level of belief. Come on, can you just believe your father? He's so close. He is right there. You are his temple. He lives on the inside of you. How can someone, a being who lives on the inside of you, be far away from you? How can a God who lives on the inside of you be far away from you? That in itself does not even line up with logic. It does not line up with logic. Someone can live on the inside of you and yet be far away from you. It is your mind that tells you that. He's right there. 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 He is close. Very close to you. 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 Your father is not a distant reality. He's not. Talk to him. Talk to him.
talk to him. All you need to do is believe. Let's believe. Oh, this young woman came today. She shared her testimony. My goodness. She said she believed. Don't be too grown to believe. Don't be too mature to believe. Can you just trust that God is on the inside of you? He shows you patterns. He wants to show you patterns. He wants to show you possibilities. He wants to tell you the things that are coming. <laughs> he wants to show you his plans for your life. He wants to have communion with you. He is there. He is there. He is there. All you need to do is to realign your heart and realign your mind. Realign your heart and realign your mind. God is no longer a distant reality. It's not a distant reality. He's very close. He's not far from you. He's your father. He's not far from you. Everything you think only men of God can do. I stand here to tell you that no. When you hear people say, oh, God said this to me. God gave me this idea. That grace is available to you. He's the same God. He's your God. He's your God. He's your Father. He is there for you. He is not against you. He is not choosing A over B. He is not. He is not. He is not. He loves you. He needs you to believe in Him. He needs you to trust Him. And He said, can you just trust me? That I'm closer to you than you can ever imagine. Can you trust me? That I'm closer to you than you can ever imagine. He said, I'm close to you. I'm not far. I am not far off. I'm not far off. I'm not far off. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Don't let your mind deceive you. Do you make mistakes sometimes? Yes. But that does not mean I stop loving you. That does not mean I give up on you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for revealing your heart to us. Thank you for revealing your heart to us. Thank you for revealing your heart to us. We give you praise, God. We give you honor. We adore you, Father. <laughs>